Not only did he have a bacterial infection, he had a viral um, bacteria. Um, so everything, everybody said he was just, he was very, um, it was a complicated case. So one of the doctors mentioned something about, you know, you might want to take him to MUSC. And at first I was a little hesitant because we're local at Waccamaw and I thought about it and then I got kind of concerned if he needs to go where he needs to get his best care. So um, I called several of the doctors and in 15 minutes his, he was on his way to MUSC. The nurses from Waccamaw called me on the way here and said, Susan, I heard something went wrong. I said, what? And I tried to call up here and finally got a hold of somebody and he had gone into cardiac arrest, was in cardiac arrest for 10 to 15 minutes. And then they ended up putting him on what they call the Arctic Sun. And then they also put him on an um, oscillating machine. There was a wealth of data suggesting that um, post cardiac arrest that therapeutic hypothermia, lowering a patient's temperature would be protective to the neurologic system and that people would have better outcomes and we're fortunate, um, I'd been trying for some time to get a protocol in place and they were fortunate to have Joanne here come who had experience and passion and saw what um, the improvement in outcomes you could have uh, by cooling people post arrest and so um, she was a force <laughs> to be reckoned with and helped get everybody together and helped um, develop a protocol. So I came from a hospital in Virginia that was involved in the first clinical trials in testing the induced hypothermia after cardiac arrest protocol and when I moved to Charleston um, and became involved in the intensive care units here I was asking around and asking why they weren't doing this protocol and nobody had even heard of it until I found Dr. Boylan who had heard of it and was trying to get the protocol up and going here. And so with my experience and your knowledge and support, we were able to make this a nurse driven protocol where if a patient had a cardiac arrest, the nurses would implement cooling as soon as possible and we've kept it as a nurse um, that the nurses can initiate the protocol kind of on purpose mm -hmm. um, because we feel like that is the quickest method of action. There are actually other mechanisms by which you can induce and maintain cooling by the intravascular route but we felt like that may delay cooling mm -hmm. and the most important part is to cool the patients as quickly as possible and we feel like the methods that we have now can with ice packs and chilled saline and the arctic sun and lavage the nurses can implement those easily and quickly at the bedside um, and the patient receives the benefits of cooling immediately after arrest. We performed hypothermia on now 124 patients and our best data supporting the benefits of this protocol first of all are is Angus <laughs> that's our um, best data but um, for out-of-hospital VFib arrest our survival rate is 58 percent and our overall survival for in-hospital and out-of-hospital arrest and all patient rhythms, all cardiac arrest rhythms is 38%, which I think is in line or at above the yeah. national average. Mm -hmm. But on Sunday, September 25th, we came in here and one of the nurses said, he's awake. So we got so excited and we got there and he recognized us and we were so happy. It was the greatest day of my life. So um, everything that they did here worked. And I guess especially the Arctic Sun, because as you can see him today, he has no brain and no physical damage. He has a strong will to live, to get well, and he's just amazing. And um, it's all by the grace of God and all the doctors and physicians and nurses and the healing hands that's been on him and his strong will to live that we're all here today. So he's. He's just amazing, and MUSC was very much amazing. From the time we walked in here, it's like you guys knew exactly what to do. You never gave up. 